Okay guys, Mike Fabinoki's here and uh, we're doing a 90 day build on my 911. Okay, I have my 911 on jack stands all the way around and starting to pull the three liter engine. I've got the uh, S hose disconnected from the oil tank and trying to get this connection of the hard line from the oil thermostat to the engine and uh, I've tried heat and I've tried all kinds of things. I'm not using crescent wrenches. I'm using actual wrenches, the correct sizes, but uh, I can't get it to bust loose. So I'm just gonna cut the hose. I have already actually started cutting it. I know that's not the proper way, but at this point I don't see any other way without just destroying it. So uh, I cut the uh, hose side, not the hard side and I cut it a few inches back so that we could take it to a hose shop and have it repaired if I choose to but this engine probably won't ever go back in this car so it won't actually matter to me but anyway so here we go <coughs> we've drained the oil plate so it's out of the engine the engine's empty now we've drained the tank the oil tank itself and then pulled the S hose down and now we're pulling the hard line right here from the flex line and then to the thermostat and then we're going to start doing the starter the electrical the fuel lines and then pull the shift coupler and the motor mounts and stuff like that so anyway here we go okay so uh, now we're going to take off the uh, passenger rear tire and wheel to get to the starter easier some setbacks some broken bolts some wrong bolts some um, stripped out bolts prior owner either wasn't uh shouldn't have been working on it or the uh shop it was at shouldn't have been working on it but anyway we're going to correct all that as we go back together i've got 35 plus years as a porsche tech so i do know what's supposed to be in it so anyway here we go and we'll be chronicling it as we go thank you okay on a side note so on the other side, the uh, screw, <laughs> this one's got it too. The screw that holds the rotor on was broke off in it. And uh, this side's at least flush. The other side, it was sticking out about eight millimeters. And so I had to grind it flush, center punch it, drill it out, and then retap it. It looks like I'm gonna have to center punch this one, drill it and retap it too. but. But anyway, and then also the rear valance, this piece right here, below the muffler, um, had the wrong bolts and nuts in it, uh, had SAE stuff in it instead of metric, and they didn't fit the hole very well, so I had to cut half of them off. I couldn't actually even get them out of the hole. Somebody drove them in there or and tightened them down and with lock nuts to the top side. Anyway, it was a nightmare. Also, the... Uh, on the calipers this one has the correct bottom bolt in it but the other rear caliper did not um, the starter bolts um, it has the round nuts with the allen head inside of it and the top one is um, wallered out it's uh, stripped <laughs> so I can't get it off until the starter off until the motor and tranny come down and I was trying to get the starter off for like an hour the other day until I finally figured out why I couldn't get that nut off um, so it's been like that everywhere I go inside this thing it's got mismatched hardware mismatched bolts and nuts um, so 30-minute job takes three days. It turns into a long project. But I think we can still get this thing done in the 90-day uh, build on it. We're not going to paint it in 90 days. Um, although I do have new seat covers, um, new rim line pieces for the doors and dash and steering wheel and rim line floorboards and all that stuff. Anyway, that'll all get done. Just no paint yet. No paint and no upgrades on the brakes or the transaxle yet. So, although I do have the brake upgrade and I do have the transaxle upgrades ready to go, I just, I don't feel I've got the time frame to do that yet. That'll probably be a next year project. So anyway, here we go, guys.
All right, so we've got, uh, of course, the rear wheels off of it and on four jack stands. And uh, <clears throat> we've got uh, both rear axles out of it, CV axles. Here's the driver's side, the passenger side's over there. Um, we've got both rear rotors off of it. Calipers, I uh, just loose just sitting there, just so I don't lose the bolts, I just finger tightened them. Um, I have, the car has, th what's weird is it has three new calipers on it. The, both front calipers are new and the other, the passenger rear caliper is new. This caliper is not new, but there is a new one in a box over there. So we're going to put that one on here. Um, eventually I have a uh, Boxster S Brembo's um, and the conversion brackets. But for now, we're just going to clean the car up wheel bearings, suspension bushings, um, including in the torsion housings, uh, clean up the transmission. We're gonna take it apart and at least inspect it, make sure there's no blown synchros or anything like that, put it back together. And then uh, we're gonna pull the Euro motor out of it. Nothing wrong with it, it runs. It's just, I'm going with an LS power plant. And so, uh, um, we're gonna put the new banana bushings, the uh, power flex bushings in the banana arms up here. And then we're gonna put new rear wheel bearings here in the hubs. And then new front wheel bearings, new front suspension bushings, and then new sway bars and stuff like that. So we're gonna do all of that, including the motor. We're not gonna get into gear changes yet. Um, probably not gonna put the 7075 um, side plate on the transaxle yet because that requires more time that I'm not willing to spend yet. Um, I'm not gonna drive the car hard to begin with. I'm gonna break it in and we're gonna just kinda, you know, uh, so we're gonna get it put together with new bearings, new bushings, new brake hoses, new brake lines, um, new motor gone through transmission. If there's anything in the transmission it needs, I'll go ahead and replace it stock wise. <clears throat> um, new fuel cell ups front, new um, uh, with the in tank pump, the new brand new Renegade one that just they just came out with. I don't even know if it's on their website yet. Um, the um, cooling system, the Renegade cooling system, all of that stuff. I have pretty much everything in their catalog to do an SC car. So, um, but anyway. For now, we're not doing a brake upgrade. I am gonna cross drill these rotors. I have done the other side. It's sitting over there. Um, I'll insert that picture into the video, but anyway, this is where we're at tonight. Uh, I'm gonna go over and start laying up this rotor in the bridge port and get it ready to be drilled. And then, uh, um, like I said, there's going to be a lot of cleanup though before, and the motor and gearbox has to come out before we uh, do anything else. We're going to probably wire wheel all of this up inside here and primer it and then Rust-Oleum black it or Pour 15 black it or whatever. Um, the banana arms are going to get cleaned off so that they're bright aluminum. The transmission is going to get cleaned. It's bright aluminum. Everything's going to be nice and tidy under here. I'm going to re-zinc, yellow zinc the uh, link plates here, the suspension link plates and the covers and all new power flex bushings for all of this. So it'll look nice when I'm done. But, uh, and that's the whole theme of the car is I want it to be so that it'll go another, you know, 80, 100 years, whatever. But uh, it's a 1980, so it's 44 years old. But it's, and it's only got 62,000 miles on it. It's just it sat for a long time and so all the fuel lines are garbage and all the brake line brake hoses are garbage and all that stuff it just yeah anyway that's what we're doing that's why we're doing it guys appreciate it like share comment and subscribe thank you